Uh, should we make it one tonight? We've got Heat Wave taking on Midori. Um, and one of the reasons I was talking about, you know, this has the potential to go to map five. Is these two teams are are very very close to the standings. Let's before we get too far in the standings, uh, want to point out that Shroom Squad got beat. Shroom Squad no longer undefeated. There are no undefeated teams left in NA Expert. So, uh, interesting shakeup here very recently at the top of the bracket where all three of these teams have all managed to beat each other. But let's let's move on down a little bit. Uh, two teams we're talking about today. So, Heat Wave and Midori. I mean, 8 and 13 according to the Face It website. But, I mean, both are 7 and 2, right? If we look at the two losses for both of these teams, uh, both have lost to Shroomies. Heat Wave lost to ASU but beat Avidity. That was, that's a huge dub. That's a huge, huge dub. Both of our teams today, both Heatwave and Midori, lost to Shroomies. Uh, Heatwave lost to ASU. Midori lost to Tanuki. Uh, and we, we actually saw that match here on stream. That was a five mapper. Um, you, you know, and that's, it was super, super close. And I think it's tough to tell, but what we can say, what we do know for certain, is ASU 3 0 Tanuki. Does this mean that Heatwave is the favorites in this? It's hard to tell. But that's basically what we have given the information provided and a little bit of transitive property. Uh, I didn't get an invite. Uh, guys? Just trying to see if we can get a quick resolution of this. Um, made it get in the lobby. To be fair, the game hasn't started. Unfortunately, we're just gonna have to... We're gonna have to use our imagination here for map one. I'm thinking they started on Sanctum. They're gonna start on Sanctum. Heatwave is trying to play... Uh, a Sigma on Sanctum, and Midori is running a Ramatra comp and we're trying to rush at him. And trying to run across the gap using a Lucy, uh, Lucio Kiri to rush the Ramatra comp down onto the Poke Compa Heat Wave. That is my prediction of what is happening right now in this moment. Okay. Well, we finally got an end of map one. Oh, Heat Wave took it. Heat Wave took it. Midori started with the first round. Heatwave came back and won the next two. And what had to be a very close control. So that's a lot of deaths. That's a lot of team fights. This is this is gonna be a bloodbath. There's chain. All right. Let's get into it. It's Friday night. It's time for some face it league season two. We finally get some Overwatch. Long awaited. Uh, something's activated. Let, let's get into map two. Show me some Overwatch. Damn, I didn't catch the music in time. That would've been a great spot to end it. All right, that's enough. That's enough of that. No more break time. It's time to get serious. All right, both the new additions here from Majority's roster are playing. We kind of touched on that before the last map, but just confirmation here. Shane showing us the Ramatra. Both teams showing us the Ramatra, as a matter of fact. Disaro, what's up, my friend? Hello, welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for four years of support. Maybe five. Shit, I don't know. Five, four, three, two, one. Attackers incoming. Defend objective A. All right. Heatwave versus Midori. Heatwave with a 1 0 lead and a very aggressive push right out of the gate to just hunt down Lucio. Uh, Ducio on the Lucio. Oh no, I have to sneeze early, really? Oh! I used the mighty sneeze cooldown and uh, Dimitri fell over. There you go. Oh, we even get the Megatron skin coming out from Chain. Get, get out of my white cord. Oh. Uh, this skin is awesome. That's a one and done on point A in nearly six minutes. Uh, in the time bank as we march into point B. Vintage. Already. Just making life difficult here for the defensive heat wave. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> so Dory just realized the entirety of Heatwave was like back at their spot. <laughs> a bit of a chase into the back trying to find the support. Uh, Megatron helping out from across the way. Staying safely up top is able to catch Ruka in their sight lines. And second fight win. Uh, despite a funny moment there from Midori. <laughs> They're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sparrow in the back like, guys? guys? <laughs> Team? Team? Sparrow with our first ult online. Yeah, let's see where this pulse is going to go. Gonna drop right into the back. Throw it on top of the supports. Finds both. There you go. That should be another fight win. We'll go back into chain. Who's popped a nemesis form up top? Sparrow's actually able to catch that kill on a Dimitri. Pink Boy has clapped back a little bit. Uh, has found a trade. Ooh. Can you get out of there? Let's go check this out. Get the exit pick. Nice couple of kills there from Chain to kind of secure the back end of this fight. That will allow time for Vintage to work their way up. I don't know if Vintage is going to make it back here for a true 5v5. Pellet decided to stay up front and help Chain. I think that was the right play here to hold the door. I mean, I'm not a coach. What would I know? Vortex to protect the right-hand side, knowing both DPS were coming out that way. Good scout there for Paulette, who's close to a sound barrier. Annihilation Bob going to be thrown into the mix first, trying to hold on to that Lucio ultimate just in case. Now, late Annihilation in. Just going to take Megatron down. Can't help but feel the sound barrier has got to come out. So let's lose it. They're able to hit three with it. It's going to even have to take the fight. A later sound barrier is in. As Dimitri has some tendrils of death as well. It's going to be the first fight win on Ikevalda here for Heatwave. I appreciate it, this room. Appreciate it very, very much. Defensive pulse from Zephyr. I didn't get a chance to mention Zephyr on this squad. I thought I saw Zephyr have been added. Uh, Zephyr uh, was not on the WASB roster. That was played on like August 2nd. And I noticed that Zephyr was on the roster today. Didn't get a chance uh, to talk with anybody from Heatwave today. So I didn't get any inside scoop on that one, unfortunately. Bob out here from the defense. Pigboy's already able to pick up a pair. Here, let's just go get to Pigboy Pop. Are y'all going to see nine this? Oh, that was entirely too close for comfort. But Dimitri does make it back, and with a two-player advantage, courtesy of Pig Boy, they're able to win that fight and stabilize. But that one was a little close. Hi, Sparrow. Sparrow's chilling up here. Oh, I was trying to go to some Pig Boy pop. There I go. Okay. With the cart so close to the objective. Defense is just holding back. They're not trying to take high ground. Take boy holding cart. And there goes the other four. Maybe to try to dislodge. They don't want to give up too much space. And pretty quickly, uh, Midori are able to drop down and find that first pick. It's a trade on DPS. Ant Matrix up here for the defending heat wave. Woo. One punch landed up top. Chain kind of found themselves in a bit of a support sandwich. But Backs up on the objective and has an annihilation here to help close this thing out. You can see a fall. Pig Boy gets an immortality field on point as Ooh, Dimitri comes over the top in a, a Diva Mech. Dimitri just appeared out of nowhere. Punch chain in the face. Wow, that was Pellet coming in. He got a good kill. There's just not enough reinforcements left. This is Zephyr scouting holding high ground for the moment. Looking for a rotation. Big Boy swapped over to a Symmetra at some point through that after after getting killed in that last fight, I believe. Maybe even fight before last. Vintage does have another Bob online or coming online here momentarily. This looks at the entirety of Midori, just went around through main. Using an ant matrix to clear the way and try to just muscle this thing in for free. They're going to throw Bob in late at the fight. Dimitri is on the cart trying to stall this thing out. 
Well, buy some enough time for the rest of the team to get out here. Ooh, up over the top! Hell in! I don't know if they got the kill or not. Well, uh, Big Boy doesn't end up dead. Either way, you slice it. And with 22 seconds in this last attempt here from Midori, they're gonna get it done. They're gonna batter down the doors. They're headed inside the castle. Yurito, thank you. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you being here. I bet finally get your squad on stream. I'm looking forward to it. Photon barrier combined with Nemesis. Aggressive here. Dimitri is charging forward into some squishies, dancing around that photon. Big Boy goes running way past. Look how aggressive these DPS are getting. Zephyr throwing a pulse. And Megatron caught on the bad side of it. Go back to Vanish. Here's the attacking team is trying to find enough poke damage across the bridge. Got to be careful of those right clicks out of the sim. Good poke face here from the defense. They buy a lot of time off the clock. Now an Matrix in, and Chain is in a bit of a do or die situation. It's all or nothing here for Chain. Either get the kills or die try. Anywhere Tony Field's already out. Maywall's already is. Not a whole lot of cooldowns left here. That implication matrix won't last, or excuse me, that annihilation won't last a whole lot longer. Woo! But guess what? Chain's able to stay alive. Megatron with a well-timed amplification matrix gets the double healing in, but it's a back and forth here on this point. Dimitri with an annihilation, looking to close it out. Pellet throws in the cell barrier here in a 2v2 situation. Gets just melted by the tendrils. Ooh, with 12 seconds remaining, I don't know if that high-risk play is going to pay off here from Adori. I don't know what choice you had this late into the into the fight. I don't know what choice Powlett had with that sound barrier. Had to try something. Chain's going to get popped. Bob holding down the point for the moment. Vintage gets one. Megatron gets one. Okay. So Midori's still in this fight. Hanging on for everything they've got. Even through the sound barrier of Ducio. Vintages will eventually get hunted down on the high ground. Sparrow returning with the blizzard in the pocket. And this cart slowly inches around. Midori have survived for a little bit longer, but by just the hair on their chinny chin chin. The kill on to Zephyr would go a long way. No, Zephyr turns around and puts that kill on to Chain instead. Dimitri, the only tank left standing. A blizzard, kind of a last ditch hope. Dimitri is caught in that. They need some punching power to work through all of that health. The immortality field, keep it Dimitri alive through the blizzard. And as they thaw out, they're able to get back into this fight, but overtime continues. Ruka, trying to break the stalemate here. Wall up. Oh, chain was back, but didn't land the right hook. Couldn't quite get it to connect. That one lands, but it's gonna be too little too late. This is as far as Midori's gonna get. Honestly, admirable from Midori to push as far as they did. That could have easily slipped through their fingers at the beginning of point C. Uh, and they're able to kind of work it down into that all-important corner, uh, you know, where you typically see the team fights take place inside the castle. So getting that extra bit of progress could be the difference between a tied series going into map three or Midori staring down the burial match point. We'll see how they look on their defense. Ooh, no tracer. Here to kick things off. We're gonna uh, run with the Echo Cass. Both pretty versatile as far as a uh, poke brawl hybrid style. Echo might be the most versatile DPS in the game. Such tracer. That didn't quite work. I was hoping to like see the stickies fly and then swap to Heatwave's point of view to see the stickies explode. That was that was the plan. Eh, we'll get it next time. 
All right, Zephyr working on the left. Bulk of the team working around right-hand side of the center tower here. Kick things off. See how much room Zephyr can get. Ooh, Chain's already pushed forward. So while Zephyr was trying to push into the back, Chain managed to work in and just break open the ranks of Heat Wave. And it should just be the end of this attack. Yeah, nice clean fight win here from Midori. All five still standing. All right, second attempt. No ults to speak of really on either side. Megatron should be the first one online with an Ant Matrix. Uh, which kind of means that Heat Wave needs to work fast, right? Otherwise, they could find themselves in a pretty precarious spot if that Ant Matrix catches them off guard. Same story here in second attack. Same verse, uh, second verse, same as the first. There you go. That's what I was trying to say. Only this time, Juicy and Dimitri are able to get a pick. Majority overextends a little bit more than they did in their first defense, and they get punished for it. With that, they're trying to back up and regroup. You know, they had a, had a slight recall, had a bridge there in that second verse that they weren't expecting. Pulse bomb inside the house. Here's that M matrix I talked about. I think it's a little bit further back than Majority would have liked, but they are able to stabilize on the back. But in response, Ruka just gets drilled on the other side. Will Dimitri be able to pick up one? Sparrow, the only tank standing here for the defense, using a duplicate to try to win out that war. Now the only tank standing, period. Duplicate coming in clutch here for the defense of Midori. No ticks picked up as we cross the halfway mark. All right, sound barrier uh, is going to be available for both of our squads here. I would expect a slightly slower push out of Heat Wave this time. Midori tried to get aggressive around Pillar last time, and they kind of got punished for it. They're being a little bit more conservative, and Chain is going to push around left-hand side. We get a hurt of dead eye somewhere there. Not going to not gonna make it to the pop in time, sorry. Sound barrier out for both of our squads. Annihilation here from Dimitri to try to push on to this objective. It's just absolutely surrounded. Pig Boy tried to hit the pressure relief valve. Nails it. Puts Chain into the dirt, but Heat Wave are going to have to do this without their Baptiste. It's quick disengage from Midori. Do they have time to recontest? test? I don't think they do. Nope. Mary's just going to hold back and reset for a point B defense. Aggressive push there from Sparrow. Okay. Oh, I'm back. I always, think, I always find this page so risky, particularly as the attackers. Oh, that's a pulse landing. Immortality Field makes it up. Ant Matrix is in, but uh, Ducio's in your back line as well. Ducio's already able to pick up Vintage. Zephyr following up all that. There's only one support left. Just Lucio heals available here for the defense of Midori. Jane's still surviving using that extra armor from the Nemesis and eventually will fade. Wanted that trade on to Pig Boy. Good peel from Heat Wave. Uh, keep that from happening. Car continues to roll. I think the Echo could be very advantageous here as they're looking to take the high ground. Woo. Interesting stubborn hold there from Heat Wave. Eventually, it breaks apart, and they kind of fall in two separate directions. Sparrow with a duplicate follows one half of the pack and picks up both of them. And, I mean, it was a, a good press from Midori that forced Heat Wave into a really bad spot. They forced Heat Wave to kind of drop two separate ways, splitting off, uh, and then... A little divide and conquer from Midori. Buck 45 left on the clock. Ooh, chain here with a, a little blitzkrieg maneuver. Sparrow trying to push you from the outside. Oh, oh, let's go back to Chain. That is a lot of damage. Immortality field forced out. They're going to drop the dead. I see if they can finish off one of these two targets. Trying to hunt him in from the outside. But it's Vintage who's picking up the kills. Chain's going to pop the Annihilation and just go run in and pick up everybody else. Vintage set him up. Chain knocks him down. 75 seconds to go. Oh, we 
gonna push through high ground. Ooh. Spoke damage is trying to cover. I think they're trying to get the rest of the team in. Somebody's stuck. Okay. The Echo is harassing Ruka in the back, perhaps? There we go. Eventually, everybody's able to cross. You can still see all the damage flying in from those sticky bombs. They have Matrix, Sound Barrier stacked on top of each other. Here from Heat Wave inside this small room. Two for one trade, favoring the defense of Midori. They look back in on Main Street. I mean, this is all Midori. The cards got away from them a little bit, but they have full control of this map. Nice pair of kills here from Vintage on the back end. 18 seconds to go. This is looking like a tie map, unless we see something just extraordinary out of Heat Wave here in this final 10 seconds. This is going to be tough. Ooh, that might just be the start. This pig boy somehow finds Megatron from across the map. Is that a jump shot from Spawn to find the Baptiste? What an opener here in this fight. This chain now very low. Sparrow using a duplicate onto the Diva and Lou that try to keep Shaper tagged him, but no, they cannot keep the tank alive. And it's a, I asked for a miracle, and Sparrow delivers a 3K with a self-destruct. Oh no, Sparrow saves the day from Midori. What a finish on oh, no, Ike Tie us up. Hold on, fixing the score, fixing the score. There we go. Hey, I didn't fix the score. That's just been one of those days, huh? Wait, no, I didn't fix the score. We are tied. We are tied. And we only saw one map, and so my brain was like, we've only seen one map. All right. And what a map it was. Holy cow. I was like, there's no way, there's no way Heat Wave have any shot at this map, right? You know, that's that's the thinking. And then and then suddenly that, that shot lands. And it's like, holy cow. Uh, Pig Boy hits a, a sniper shot from downtown onto the Baptiste. Go back and Pig Boy's still in spawn. That's a jump shot out of spawn all the way to bridge. Like, it's the only thing that makes sense is what happened there. Oh, uh, and then, so it's like, wow, what a massive advantage. There's a real chance for Heat Wave. Heat Wave is able to clean up on the back of that, find a ton of kills, and then Sparrow just comes up with a 3K duplicate self-destruct. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, vintage on the hit scan, leading in Elims. Um, kind of very, very close with uh, Dimitri as well as Chain. Uh, they're in damage, both, all three right there in that 17,000, about 500, 600 damage separating those three in, uh, in raw damage. Maybe, uh, you know, Ruka died a, a few times there. That client kind of getting punished a bit. And I think that's just, I, I don't, I'm always one to advocate for, I think that is just props to Midori. That's just props to Midori for the way they were able to set up the timing on those uh, when they would rush in, um, as they would like kind of realize that there's a tracer going around the other side, particularly on their first point defense, knowing they didn't have a tracer, they'd see that opportunity and use that to rush forward. Uh, so, I mean, really nice timing uh, from from Midori to put the back line of Heat Wave in that situation. I am by no means criticizing Heat Wave support line more than I am praising Midori. Sorry, I broke your screen while I'm accepting invites. I can't believe that finish, y'all. Oh, I can't. Now my imagination just runs wild with what happened on, on Nepal, right? Like, what did we miss? What did we miss? What did we miss on Nepal? Because that was a wild finish to Ikebola. Are we, are we going to get our fifth map five in a row for week five? So far, we're tied up. Uh, this is Heat Wave's map pick heading into map three, Coliseo. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to our bands here. These teams are gonna they're gonna take a moment. Maybe somebody need a break or something. But we can go back and see. There we go. That was Runa Sapi banned out by Midori. Uh, so then we we are gonna get that Coliseo pick. 
Uh, New Queen Street is the least played of the push maps here in Season 2 of Face It that we've seen on stream. So, and by, by a considerable margin. Nobody wants to play New Queen Street in this meta, apparently. Man, it's, that was something else. What a finish. What a finish. And, I mean, Vintage vintage Impala being added to this roster, I, th I think, was a, a huge boon here. Oh, it looks like we are getting a sub. Okay. Uh, So we are getting uh, Kirito in, in the DPS role. So who's... There's five, five uh, DPS players listed for Heat Wave. Um, at least there are, it was, that was at least on Wikipedia for WASB. I think they have four listed currently on Face It. But yeah, sometimes it's hard to tell because like the Face It names don't always match up with like your Overwatch name. So sometimes it's hard for me to tell who's who and, and trying to compare rosters from two weeks prior or that kind of thing. But with that said, Heat Waves, you know, do still have quite a few DPS players on their roster to kind of rotate in and kind of suit the needs. So we're getting one of those substitutions here with Kirito coming in. Initiating match. Let's get in call safe. It's time for map three. Who will take the lead? In our series. Beautiful map. This is one of those maps you end up in the thick of it so much, you don't often get to kind of just step back and listen to the birds. We've seen D.Va become very prominent in the meta here on Coliseo uh, because of the ability to bounce up and down, your ability to control high ground once you get into this side section, once you get into the, the second fight for this section. The the D.Va's ability to really bounce up from here and utilize this area is very, very strong. So we'll be looking, we'll be looking to see how Heat Wave kind of take advantage of that maneuverability. As they're going to be facing Chain on the Sigma on the other side. So much more static comp, despite Pigboy coming out on the on the Widowmaker. So typically when you have... I often see, like, the, the Diva comp run with a, a Baptiste. And the Kiryu works, too, because you can still, like, climb up walls and get to high ground. But having... Ooh! <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's why you have Pigboy on the Widowmaker. You're like, hey, I just killed your Bap. That is going to be fight over. Oh, they're, they're, they were fortunate that Kirito didn't get the melt with the focusing beam and Sparrow's actually able to trade. Kill on to the Widowmaker. Now there's still no Baptiste on the other side. So that is notably lacking sustain here for Midori. But looks like they're able to muscle through it. Megatron has made their way back almost. But despite a lack of Baptiste, discipline play here from Chain and Midori. They're able to maintain their ground. Not only do they not lose the fight, they don't even give up ground. Oh, Pig Boy gets another one. I almost got to your palm in time. I could feel it. I could feel it was about to happen. Heard that shot go over the shoulder. Sparrow into the back line is able to find that kill. Oh, that is not Sparrow. That's neither. <laughs> also not Sparrow. That's Sparrow. Is he landing a volley on Kirito? It's a concerning rush out of the backfield here for Heat Wave. Is trying to push forward and get some precious ground. It's been, I mean, a bit of a neutral game. And even through the Katsune rush, it's a D-back on onto Dimitri early in this fight. Jane taking a lot of damage, trying to move forward. Cannot connect a grasp the focusing beam. It's a duplicate onto a Lucio just to avoid the beam from the other side. Yurto still trying to go in and take the duel. Two Lucios versus an Echo. Poor Sparrow, that just nightmare fuel, right? Oh my. <laughs> All right, Kirito. 
That was like some just fundamental Lucio. Like it was like, okay, here's what, what are we doing? What are we doing? Uh. Mookie, thank you for the follow. Appreciate everybody being here. Supporting some some face it league season two. All right, it's Diva Duplicate in the back. Looks like we've got a couple of different separate duels going on. Uh, Dimitri is just kind of looking to regroup with the rest of the team. I did not see what prompted the regroup, unfortunately. It looks like all five players are there. Where's that self-destruct going? Up there. Oh, ow. Hi. Sparrow just appeared up through the window. Melts through two of your players before Kirito Tai finally puts him down. 4v3 favoring Midori. As chain through in a defensive grid, it flux a kind of whiff. So you'll get back in that. Oh, went for the stun. Couldn't quite get the stun on Dimitri. Dimitri's even able to find Paulette with that self destruct. Chain ducks behind their own shield to avoid the focusing beam, but just didn't have enough sustain to get top back off. This is a fight win here for Heat Wave. Just a little bit of stall in the back. Big Boy is able to utilize, you know, that limited mobility from the Widowmaker to, to move up onto that high ground like I was talking about and join the rest of the team. So, you know, it's a kind of a one-time use for the Widowmaker, but Big Boy is able to put a lot of pressure down here on Main Street. I mean, it forces Midori to kind of back up and respect to these Infrasites. And that's going to be close spawns picked up. Sparrow was hoping to get over there in time, but just can't make it. As a duplicate on to the Sigma. Kirito's actually going to get two, and this duplicate Gravitic Flux. Yeah, Megatron gets smashed down. This is getting out of hand for Midori. Big Boy wins a duel against a Tracer in the back line. Chain finds Baby Diva over here somewhere. What are you doing over here, Dimitri? All right, anyway. Sniper duel. All right, after Dimitri went down, got demeked, prompted to disengage. They are back five strong and heat waves right back into this fight. Keep an eye on this with a duel for a moment. Oh, never mind. We have a continue rush out on the other side. I want to watch this echo. Oh, Vintage picks off Pegboy in mid Katsune rush, keeping the, the flanks clean over there from Midori and a nice disengage from the rest of, from the, rest of the squad. Dory now with a two-player advantage, and they're not the ones that invest in the ultimate. They're able to get in. Vintage. Vintage popping off in the back. Sorry, I missed that buff. It's been so difficult for either team to get a true 5v5 team fight. Both of these Widowmakers... Uh, have found great value at the beginning of these fights. Blocks will find Pig Boy. Defense Matrix there to block the, the Hyper Spheres, and Chain goes down in a heap. Vintage is able to get one, but without their Sigma, I don't know if they're going to really do much else. Sparrow is stuck in the back line. Does have a Pulse Bomb. Let's check in on Sparrow. What are you trying to do back here? All right. Oh, they're gonna go back in. After Kirito runs her off, you're gonna turn around and go back in. No one can hide. There you go, plus two to Midori in this after killing the back line. See, we've kind of he feeling the squeeze from both ends, but kill from Ducio will serve him well. No close spawn, so Sparrow's gonna have to make the long walk of shame to catch back up with the team. I only see three Midori players, as a matter of fact. They look at as much as they can. Now can they get a clean escape? Okay, there's the fourth. Yeah, Vintage is covering down long sight lines. Trying to stay as far away from those two as possible. Big Boy has gone over to a Tracer, by the way. And his back line's in a lot of trouble. Duplicate use. Jane absolutely melted here from the double tracers on the other side, especially combined with the damage coming out from Dimitri. 
Good fight win here for Heat Wave. They prevent Midori from getting the checkpoint. TMI, faded TMI, but welcome. Happy to see you uh, either way. Ooh, what's going on here? That's close. Bonds unlocked. Continue to rush down here for Heat Wave. Sound very in for both of our squads. Ooh, I don't think Chain got that. Chain was around the corner and did not get the sound barrier, it looks like. I mean, I might be mistaken, but that in and of itself might have just been the difference makers. The difference makers? You know what I mean. Ah, nice kill from Sparrow. All right. <laughs> Goes for the protective pulse. <laughs> Doesn't quite work out. <laughs> Gotta respect it, though. And it's a really quick re-engage here from Midori. They're just trying to keep the constant pressure cycling. So rather than taking a clean 5v5, they were hoping to drive Heat Wave away, but Heat Wave still continues to fight for a strong. There's Pig Boy. There's Pig Boy. They get five strong. Pig Boy's got a pulse as well. All right, Chain's moving in with a uh, excuse me, with a primal rage. Jumps in on three in the back. Already used the bubble. He's gonna go in with the primal. Lucio. Bell by Powellette, chasing the Diva, will find the DMAC, and gets the pilot as well. He's a little primal range there, out of chain, keeping Midori here in this map. 67 seconds to go, as they can control the bot. No more ults left to use here, and a couple of fight wins in a row are going to be required for Midori to take the lead. Nice move from Sparrow to draw the aggro towards the opposite back line and then recall with 13. Deep push in here from Dimitri. That was a bold move and it bought a lot of room. It was uh, Kirito using the duplicate to get a third support in the battlefield, kind of enabling that push. And it's going to get the bonus Katsuni Rush in the mix as well. Healing up the actual Kiriko. Woo! The bottom of the nice shot onto Megatron. That might have done it. That is going to be Heat Wave moving up 2 1 in the series. Clean fight, Wed. Man. Two Kirikos are better than one. Heat Wave on match point. Little, little Dimitri play of the game. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Whew. That one... That one felt like Heat Wave was pretty much in control, right? I mean, I don't know about y'all, but according to my eye test, that one really felt like Heat Wave was setting the pace that entire series. Uh, they come out with the D.Va. They, you know, kind of checked Midori. Midori coming out with the Sigma look. And even even though they're running kind of a Widowmaker with the D.Va, which is certainly not something you see very often, I mean, Pig Boy is able to click heads. Uh, I mean, just real good work with, with the D.Va coming out from Dimitri forces Midori to make changes. They're trying to go in over to a Winston uh, to try to counter and just can't quite ever catch back up. So a really good read, really well played out at Heat Wave. They dictated the pace of that one. Now they've got match point. Now they just need one more to go to that precious eight and two. Uh, and, and what I, I mean, I stand by is an extremely poor match. Remember, both of these teams only have two more matches to play uh, before playoffs. Uh, and that, you know, that cutoff is right there. The seven and two teams run all the way down to 15th. Top 16 make it into the postseason. This win is important for both of these teams. Midori trying to bounce back here on their map pick. Of course, it's Flashpoint. Uh, Sir Vasa was their pick. Hope we are going to get a side swap. So we will have majority in the blue jerseys here for map number four. Let me get that changed to the bottom of your screen real quick. And switch sides. Magic. All right. There's been a quality two maps. 
Okay, are we getting another sub? Uh, we did have Heat Wave uh, sub in Kirito. Uh, uh, Kirito? I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, there in map three, pulled out a lot of the Echo uh, there for Heat Wave. Um, and uh, it looks like Midori's still sticking with, with Vintage Sparrow on the front line for now. We're still waiting on Shane to get in here, but Shane has been late to the party, I think, every round. Shane's just one of those likes to show up fashionably late. Likes to make an entrance. You know, I, I picture Shane's the one that kind of like kicks the door open and the music stops when Shane enters. All the spotlights turn. Shane just likes to make an entrance. Okay, I think if we... I'm really curious how our teams want to handle Sir Austin. We've seen all, a lot of different approaches work on this map. I can't help but feel that, you know, Midori's best luck is certainly in that Ramatra comp. And I don't... You could certainly make Ramatra work here. Say next, what is, why is everybody talking about your, your testicles for? Why, why are you talking about your testicles and how itchy they are? May I recommend a shower? Shower is OP. All right? That's, that, it will fix that. I promise. You know, or either that or, you know, you're using some cheap-ass soap, all right? And your skin is sensitive. And you're putting some, like, detergent-level chemicals in your nether region. All right? Don't, don't do that. Don't don't put don't put detergent in, on your undercarriage, okay? Use like some real soap. That can also cause your balls to itch. All right, you come in, come in here and troll Overwatch Dad. I'm gonna give you real life dad advice. All right, that's that's what it is. That's what you get. That's what you get. We're still waiting on Shane. So we can we can continue to to talk about y'all's huevos if you want to. I'm very curious to see how chat responds in two minutes. This is gonna be an int very interesting two minutes from now. All right, let's get into map four. Initiating. The stairs over the building. How well can I am about to hit a wall? How well can I navigate this map backwards? <laughs> now there's a challenge for you. How well can you navigate through Overwatch maps backwards? Want to test your map awareness? Okay, Chain is showing us the Winston again here. So yeah, we are headed back into, and this is a little bit more what I expected. I was kind of, uh, I was second guessing, you know, and I wasn't super confident what our teams were gonna run here, but I, I definitely felt like I've seen, I've seen the Diva in the in the Winston comps work a lot better on this map and, and kind of winning out over say the Ramatra comps on Suravasa. So majority, they hope that they find uh, more success with the Winston this time around. Long range poke battle right out of the gate. Early high ground positioning favoring uh, Heat Wave, who is in red jerseys now, by the way. There's a little bit of pressure on the outside, and Sparrow's kind of managed to work their way underneath the defense a bit. Took about half the health bar off of Kirito. Eek, but does get punished for it. Kirito's like, hey, take a half the health bar off of me. I have a focusing bait. Do that. So with the plus one, it's going to be first cap going over to Heat Wave. The rest of Midori. Try to disengage safely. And this, this little detail, learning um, how to soft disengage properly has been such an overwatch to um, kind of level up that we've seen from our teams. Especially on Flashpoint. Uh, you gotta, every second is so precious about how fast these uh, objectives tick up. 
with that. Jane is here for a fairly quick re-engage. We do have a Katsune rush somewhere in here. Where's God? Never mind. Vince is able to pick up too. We didn't even use the Katsune rush. As I fumble around and try to find Megatron's Pov, uh, it was vintage, clicking heads. Majora with a good clean fight win here. No casualties, I don't believe in that fight. Still five tall. Lots of ults already online here for Majora as they look to hold. Why if you coming up in the bank for Heat Wave? See how they want to make this approach. Sparrow covering back stairs, going down in deep. Perhaps looking to use this pulse. It does get marked by Pig Boy. Kind of ran out from that back line. Dimitri thinking about coming in through back stairs. Okay, change their mind. Is going to head around to the front. Katsuna Rush is out here from Heat Wave as they try to move on to this point. They're going to go ahead and use their sound barrier as well. Palette will respawn. Change is pop the primal ray. That's gonna force Heat Wave all the way back into this little corner. That is a lot of damage on the chain. I can't believe you're able to dodge that focusing beam and stay alive through that reach of this 99.5. Now with a late Katsune Rush duel, chain falls. Advantage over to Heat Wave. And as Dimitri pops back in mech, and Megatron struggling to get out alive. It'll be one last fight here for this first point. Kick things off on market. Expensive fight uh, from both sides. Ooh, are y'all giving this up? Yeah, they're just giving it up, I think. Oh, they're, they're trying to make it in. I don't know if Palette made it. Palette made it at least to keep it, to get it started. Uh, but nobody else is close enough. Unfortunately, Palette gets cut down and they cannot rotate in in time. So, Majority will not get their last real fight there. And the Heat Wave are able to start things off with a 1 0 lead. Now they're looking to just clean up here. Yeah, we'll just, yeah, sure. Why not? Okay, Sparrow hiding back behind at the moment. It does have a pulse. Good pressure onto the tank, pressure onto the back line. Sparrow will get neither. Does good to dodge the pulse out of Peg Boy. Meanwhile, the rest of the Dory does circle back up to the high ground. Fighting for space. And what is the tiny room? There's a duplicate out of Kirito to help push forward. Able to pick up a couple kills on the back of that. Ooh, even gets the extra primal out. And this and very clean first fight win here for Heat Wave. Kirito has been nasty. I mean, we've seen Kirito sub in on this Echo uh, and has been causing a lot of problems for Midori. And with that with that ability to kind of push and pull with Chain, it's just, it seems like maximum pressure, maximum effort, right in Chain's face at all times. Maximum damage in the form of focusing beam and stickies. It's starting to rush out here from Heat Wave as we get Vintage off the high ground here. Mowed down by Dimitri. No chance to get that Deadeye out with a sound barrier there. Dimitri's able to pick up a pair of kills, as a matter of fact. We'll clean this one up. Heat Wave, we'll go to 2 0 here on Servasa. All right, it's gonna take three points in a row here from Midori. Oops, sorry, that was terrible. I was trying to do like a fly behind and I got stuck. Okay, interesting setup. Both teams have two entrances. Tracers are fighting over one. Palette coming to kind of back up Sparrow, give him full control. Sparrow's gonna push that all the way into a flank into the back line. Kind of open things up here. We did get a swap from Chain onto a Junk Queen that I just now noticed. 
because I am SMR too smart. Lucio falls, but Dimitri is able to get back in. Mecha trying to keep this fight going. The sound barrier fading here from Midori, and well, all the life bars are fading here from Heat Wave. Much needed fight win from the team in blue. Dimitri's gonna swap over to Rumatra. I'm not going to try to play the D.Va uh, into, into the Junker Queen. And this is where the Junker Queen can struggle. So Ramatra can feel like just an immovable force. Or an immovable object. Excuse me. Up against the Junker Queen. That was a duplicate out of Kirito. Let's go check that out. That's actually much more interesting. It's Shane coming up with a kill. So despite two tanks running him down, Shane is able to find Ducio on the disengage. That did find two with the Rampage from the duplicate, but Kirito doesn't have enough life to get the job done. Fortunately for them, they're going to mutually do. Sparrow and Chain clapping back though, and tilting this 3v3 in their favor. Excuse me, that was a 3v4 that Midori are able to swing back around. Beautiful fight win, beautiful work out of Chain in the middle of the opponent's um, uh, duplicate there. Really good opener. Really nice disengage from Midori. Right. Timmy Rift start things off. One to this point, Vintage doesn't even get a chance to pull trigger on that Deadeye. And as Dimitri just goes full bore into the thick of everything, and it works! Everybody's looking at Dimitri, the Ramatra won't die! Unfortunately, they're too late to the point, right? <laughs> Midori got the point. Rampage versus Annihilation. You see about 30% ahead up in the Sound Barrier War. Nice speed in here from, from Heat Wave. That intercept to cut off Midori is huge. Great pathing. And then that's going to give him a massive positional advantage. Moving on to this point. They've actually got first control through it. It's going to be two players hit by the Rampage, cut by the Sound Barrier out from Ducio. And Dimitri already picking up a kill on the Vintage in the back line. Megatron and Chain. Hoping to get out in one piece. Yeah, they're cut off. Woo, good Suzu. The Annihilation. Ah, oh, takes Megatron down. And Midori not able to regroup. What a disastrous turn. Another really smart play out of Heat Wave. Recognizing that... Uh, that Midori hadn't cleanly regrouped yet, and they're able to intercept, kind of cut him off at the pass. Now Midori are in a bit of a, a difficult spot here. They do have a sub to work with, but they need to act fast. Sparrow's on the point, but not able to land the pulse. Outnumbered, trying to get away, cannot. 95% on the board and running into a Katsune Rush. The Sound Barrier is the last Bastion of Soap. Here from Midori on this point and Chain goes down. Duplicate out from Kirito and the two tanks overwhelming force will end the hopes and dreams of Midori here today. Ah, oh, we get the last second pause. Don't do that. Chain. GG's. GG's in chat. Heat Wave will come out on top. I'm going to go and get them the third point on the board. Everybody, everybody scoff at Chain. I'll come back and show you all the play of the game when we get to it. I want to touch on uh, day by day. Is there there's their next opponent? I mean, a, a fairly difficult opponent, but definitely winnable. Um, they're from Midori. I'd say that's, I mean, day by day is down here. They're six and four. So, I mean, they, they're a team that can, that can upset. Um, but... Heatwave are on track with this win. Heatwave are on track if they if they stay the course uh, and don't you know don't let their egos get the best of them. They could very well finish this season ten and two, which would be just an outstanding start. Uh, I mean, this is a team that this is their first season in face it. Uh, you know, players. You know, a lot of names that I don't recognize. A lot of players who I'm just learning about for the first time. And I mean, and they they are on track for an outstanding debut uh, here in face it league season two. So. 
Uh, I look forward to seeing more out of him. I, I highly anticipate we will, you know, we will see Heat Wave and, you know, make a good run through playoffs. And is, there we, we, we finally got the conclusion of that match. Uh, let's, let's go check our play of the game. Why not? Just because I like plays of the game, right? They're fun. We got it. Dimitri got it. <laughs> Sparrow. Wow, what a long overtime stall. <laughs> oh, hey, it's okay. It's okay. Like, it's. People get passionate, all right? People get passionate. People get passionate. It's okay. It's okay. Don't hold it against them. I know. Same thing happened in Daybreak versus Northeastern. I know. I know. Hey, don't. Don't hold it against them. All right? That, that that's I, I I will stand by. We're 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 gonna give we're gonna give them a pass on this. It's a it was a tough loss in a passion series. Of course, we'd rather have seen um, Chain not quit out. But you know what? Y'all y'all be nice. All right, y'all be nice. <laughs> hey, I I appreciate y'all being here. Um, on on that awkward anticlimactic note, I don't got much else for you. So they were gonna go ahead and call it. Uh, it's been a hell of a week here. But that's going to do it. Uh, Y'all have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, friends.